Hey, I think we're live. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another Lair by Lair. Streaming today on a Saturday. And we are con today we're going to continue the Raspberry Pi radio uh, using the NPR1 API um, developed by Todd Treese. Yesterday, I did a live stream uh, in the afternoon. Uh, where I started uh, started the project, brought some components in, talked a little bit about components we're using in the project. So I just wanted to do a quick one today uh, and show some project and just sort of check in. So uh, this is sort of where we left off. Let me hide that window. This is sort of where we left off yesterday. Uh, I was just kind of showing you guys how you can, uh, a good method of importing objects or, or components into Fusion 360 uh, adjusting them around and then having the flexibility of sketches and your timeline so that you can move things around and things would sort of update. So I added a couple more buttons here. These are uh, controller buttons that are, gonna, that are going to be printed in conductive PLA. So when you touch these, uh, you'll be able to play, play pause, next, uh, uh, scan backwards 15 seconds, and then the volume knobs on the back. Uh, so what I'm planning to do is I talked a little bit about making the top here where I was going to use the desktop mill CNC and mill this out of actual wood, some cherry wood. Um, but uh, some people might not have a CNC machine and just a 3D printer. So uh, I'm, I am going to have this as a sort of two piece uh, where you can uh, 3D print this out as well. And the thing I like to do with my cases, if you guys have seen on my earlier projects like the Pi Girl Zero and Pi Girl Two, um, I like to add these connector lips instead of using screws. Uh, uh, previously, in other projects, I would make standoffs, make them long, and have uh, sort of uh, countersunk um, bores, I guess we can call them, and I would screw them from the top. So with this one, I want to do the same thing, and I've learned a little bit of um, a, a little bit of a better way to do it, um, so that it, it the lip goes all the way around, little snap fit thing clamps onto your top case. But uh, since the top case has extrusions from the top, and I can't really add a lip to the bottom and then here, because then I would have a bunch of support material and it would not look that good. So I'm, I'm going to do a two-piece uh, top cover piece that's going to sort of just glue uh, to the second piece will be printed on the reverse. So you can imagine this uh, uh, just being flat like it is on the bottom and then connecting to this in this here. It's a little a little hard to visualize, so I don't have it done yet, but that was the point of this tutorial, so I can show you guys and do it, and, and instead of just moving and not streaming, I figured I'd stream and do it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a projection of this sketch, and the goal here is step one is to make a lip across this whole thing. So I'm gonna do that by any any sketch tool will do. Uh, so I'm just gonna use a rectangle, and what I'm doing here is I'm saying, I need to sketch on top of this lip, and it'll project that lip, and it did something crazy. It, it sort of oriented all weird, but that's fine. It's because of the where the way I, I clicked on it. And Fusion does its best to like orient it where it thinks you want to be, but it doesn't matter. So since I clicked on the top of that, it actually already projected uh, these two edges here to make this sketch. So all I need to do is make an offset, and they have this offset feature, which is super duper handy. Instead of having to redraw stuff, I can just click on this edge and I get this really nice interactive offset thing. So I want this lip to be on the inside here. And actually I clicked on the wrong uh, sketch curve. So I'm gonna, click, I'm gonna click on X and then click on the inside because I want the lip to be on the inside. And I'm gonna bring it in by negative 1.2 millimeters. And the, one, and the 0.2 millimeters is because I'm actually gonna shave off 0.2 of a millimeter so that there's an offset. So that's a, sort of like a, a clearance offset to the lip. And that'll make more sense too when I show you a section analysis of it. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And then I'm going to make another offset. Click on the offset thing. Click on the same thing. And then I'm just going to put 0.2 of the millimeter. And this is what's going to shave off that uh, material from the, uh, from the cover. And hopefully this makes sense uh, once I make it here. So now that I have my offsets, I'm going to go ahead and extrude from these two offsets that I made to make that lip. All right, so I have the extrude command set. It's it just click E on my keyboard or press E on my keyboard. And now I'm gonna change the direction type from one-sided to two-sided, and I'm gonna type in one. And actually, I'm gonna type in two. <laughs> 
one is too small, I think two. So you can see it's creating this lip across the whole thing, the whole case. And it's also making it from the bottom, or actually not two-sided, I'm gonna make it symmetric, because then it'll, it'll push it downwards. So if I hold down Command key, you can see uh, you, I, I, can I can toggle between not extruding and the extrusion preview. Now I haven't said OK yet. Operation is set to join, which is going to join to the outer case and make it one, uh, one thing. And I'll hit OK. So now I have this lip here. And to sort of make things a little bit easier or a little bit less resource intensive, like it's killing my processor now, I'm going to change the material from glass to steel because I don't really need to see through it. And this will just sort of make it, hopefully, make it a little bit um, better on my computer so it's not all slow and sluggish. So the next thing you're going to notice is if I do a section analysis, which, is, which just lets me see through the thing, I have quite a bit of an overhang. So I, you can see here this is an overhang. And if you're 3D printing this, uh, it, your printer might be able to do it, but it'll be a little bit sloppy. So one thing we can do to alleviate that is just to put a, a chamfer on it, a 45 degree chamfer. So I'm going to click on a chamfer, and now I can select different, uh, different, <laughs> excuse me, uh, different edges to add chamfer. So I'm going to click on this one, and I'm going to make the chamfer 1.2 because that's the actual uh, thickness that we made this uh, this lip. And you can see me toggle between. Uh, the chamfer and not the chamfer. That's basically what it's doing. So the printer can can print that out properly without this overhang. So I'm going to click OK. That does it like that. And now I have my lip thing. Yay. So the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to create some tools that will allow me to sort of cut this away or, or, or to make this into uh, a little... Um, a little triangle so that I can um, snap fit a cover on top of it. So to do that, I am going to create a couple of different, a uh, couple of different ob uh, solids, which will be used as tools to create these projections. So I'll start off with making it on the inside here. So let's do that. I'll use um, do, 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 I'll use the rectangle tool, and I'm just going to draw on this side here. I click on this side, and I'm going to use my line tool actually to find the center of this. It doesn't really matter where the center is uh, because I'm going to uh, end up doing a, a a lip across this whole thing. So let's just skip that part and just draw anywhere here. So I'm going to draw this rectangle here, and it really doesn't matter. Uh, the width, but it does matter uh, the height of it. So 0.2 or two millimeters is the height of this uh, this tool. Hit OK, and that's pretty much it there. That's my little tool. Now I'm going to extrude this out, and I'm going to make it go the other way, not this way, but that way. And I'm going to make it one millimeter. Ah, it's uh, I have a little bug there. Good thing I have uh, a non-floaty window. So I'll just type in my values in there. Sometimes the floaty window doesn't let me punch things in. Um, so now that I have my one millimeter distance, um, actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to hit cancel. I forgot to do one thing here. This lip is still one, uh, one point two millimeters. Uh, let's go ahead and delete. Let's go ahead and delete this from our from our uh, timeline too. What I should do is bring this back. I'm actually going to rename this sketch. This is a sketch that created our, our lip. I'm going to call it um, uh, lip, like that. And now what I want to do is I actually want to extrude from this piece here, that little 1.2 clearance thing. And then I'm going to say the extents to, and I'm going to click on the top of this lip here. And that's going to cut away from the entire lip area. Now I made it 1.2 because if I were to extrude it, it wouldn't actually be touching the inner part here. The inner part here wouldn't be touching the case. So that's why I made it 1.2. Hopefully that makes sense. Now if I do a measurement on this thickness, it's actually just one millimeter. You can do that by clicking on the measure tool, clicking on one edge here, one edge here, and I guess the edge again, because I didn't catch it the first time. And it'll tell you in the measurement that it is one millimeter thick it calls it a distance because that's the distance between the two edges I clicked on, so that's fine. All right, so now I can start drawing the tool because I really need to have my my tool set exactly where uh, where that surface is, so I don't have to move things and it just 
flows better. So I'm going to hide the lip for now, the little sketch for the lip, and I'm going to create that new tool that I was telling you about. So let me turn off section analysis for, for a minute there. All right, let's go back to the rectangle tool. I'm going to project the surface of this guy here, which is just one of the edges. And I will start from, it doesn't matter where, it's sort of arbitrary so it's going to, since I'm going to use the sweep across the whole thing. So again, it only matters that it's the, the height of the tool is two millimeters is equal to the height of the lip. So I'll hit two there, hit okay. Now I'm gonna start extruding from that little rectangle. I'm gonna push it back by one millimeter and I'm gonna change the operation from cut to a new body. And this is gonna be a new body, so hit okay. Now I'm going to uh, hide the case so that I can only see the tool that we created. And I'm going to create a chamfer on two edges, on the two inner edges here, this one and this one. Now it's telling me you got an error, obviously, because I don't have enough material to, enough of an extrude, so I'm just gonna put one, and that'll make it into a triangle. So now I have this little triangle tool, and we're gonna use that uh, to create uh, a lip around the entire cover piece, the entire top piece here, actually. So that's my little piece here, whoops. Let me hide the case and it's actually gonna be added to my top here in a second, as soon as I create the top piece, but I haven't created it yet. So I'm going to bring back this case and start working on the next piece of the tool. So I'm gonna name this uh, nub tool, because <laughs> it's gonna be a nubbing for our cover, and it'll make sec uh, sense in a second here, or in a minute, or two, or five. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sketch on this edge or on this surface here which is the inside of the lip not the outside but the inside of the lip so I'm going to create a rectangle here and click on that and again it kind of doesn't matter how wide it is but it matters how tall it is so clicking over here make it's actually going to be 2.8 millimeters tall which is fine because that's uh that equals out to with the minus the chamfer and all that and so it comes out to 2.8 and it doesn't matter how wide it is so hit okay now I'll go ahead and extrude this out by one millimeter as well. And I'm gonna again change the operation to new body, so it's a new body. And I'll hit okay. And it'll create a new thing here. And I will call this like lip, hmm, I, I don't know like a good name for it. So I'm gonna call it lip cookie. I, I'm just, I don't know, I need a cookie. And now I'm gonna add uh, some chamfers to this. So from right here and right, give me a second here, and this one here. So we're kind of doing similar to the nub that we made, but this is gonna, this is just on the inside of it. So I'll hit okay. So there is our sort of uh, uh, cookie, lip cookie. I don't know what to call it. I guess could have called it like lip inner inner something. I don't know what to call it. You'll see in a second here what it does though. Uh, so now that I have my tools for creating uh, a thing here, I'm going to project the side of this tool using the project uh, the project feature, which is hidden under sketch, project include. You can just hit P on your keyboard, which is a lot easier to me. So I'm gonna hit P on my keyboard and click on this. It could also be the other side uh, this side doesn't really matter because we're going to make a sweep anyway. So I'm going to click on, come on, there we go. Click on that. It projects it. It, it just makes a copy. It traces that, uh, the side of that um, body, the cookie, and I'll hit OK. And I'm going to hit stop sketch because that's about all I need. So now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing but for the nubbin, the little nub thing, which actually isn't a good name for it. It's probably like nub cutter is what I should call it, nub cutter, because nub tool is gonna be actually something else for the cover, not the case. So I'm gonna call it nub cutter, because why not? Cookie cutter, hey, that makes sense. Um, all right, I'm gonna hide the case just so I can see the thing. And now I'm going to do the same thing, project that sketch. I wonder if I highlight it, make it blue, by clicking on it and then hit P. It projects it for me, that's nice. It saves me a step from having to click and then project, or it's just reverse, whatever. Stop sketch, that's all we need from that. Now I have all these sketches that are not named. Uh, I should name these something. This one is the outer lip, so I'm gonna call it outer lip 
and then this one is inner lip it's a good thing to name all of your sketches as you can see I have all these names so I can make sense of them and then this one is like um, inner lip outer inner lip outer no inner lip um, side or maybe projection I'm just gonna say side because it's the side of it and then this one is the uh, the outer lip outer side we don't have to put lip I, I know what it is all right so now that I have uh, those projections I actually don't need these tools anymore so I can hide them and remove them later but I'm going to bring back the case well maybe not for a second here because I need to be able to click on them so let's do let's work with the the inner side first I'm going to right click and under create there's a sweep command it's also of course under this tool menu sweep command you can see what it does it sweeps a, a sketch profile or a planner face along a selected path and that's what's going to help us make uh, an inner uh, thing across the entire case so now that I have well, I had the profile selected I'm going to select the path and that's going to be this guy here and if I zoom out far enough, you can see that it's creating, it's sweeping along this entire edge, of the, the inner edge of the enclosure. And this is creating an extra piece of the lip. Okay, so it's all set here for me. The distance is set to 100%, which is by a, a point, 1.0 value. And um, you can see if I like use these arrows, you can like, uh, you can reduce the distance, but I want it to be one. Just kind of showing you what a sweep does. And then operation is join, which is what I want. It's going to join to the actual enclosure, the case piece. So I'm going to hit OK. So now I'm going to do something similar, but I'm going to do it on the um, the, the outer edge cutter. So I'm going to click on that, right click, repeat sweep. Now that my profile is selected, I need to select a path. Oops, not the top, the case. There we go. And then I will select the path to be the outer edge here. And that's going to cut my lip. It's going to cut the outer edge of my lip. I'll hit OK. So what it's done is it's created this interesting looking <laughs> lip. Now that's like it's been cut away, but it has an inset, it has sort of an inner, it has more thickness to it. So if I do a section analysis, you can see through it right over here hopefully this makes sense soon you can see what it's doing it's making this sort of v-shape thing which is going to allow me to create a cover here that will snap fit into this and sort of clamps like this if you watch my previous uh, creating snap fit enclosures you'll see that I've done this before uh, but more with just single nubs this uh, was actually inspired by a YouTube commenter called Trolling Around. His name was actually Trolling Around. He said, why don't you make this thing sweep across the whole edge of the lip? And I was like, that's brilliant because then I have more areas, more points of, of geometry to snap fit this enclosure. So when I snap the enclosure on top of it, it'll snap it and it'll just stay stuck there for a good while. No need for hardware. It's just a friction fit type thing. I've, I've already done this, I've already applied this technique to the Pi Girl 2 case and the Pi Girl 0 case and that works out amazing. It works out really great. I want to do this for all of my projects. I actually previewed this sort of method on my three, on the 3D Hangout show that I do with my brother Pedro. But this is, I just wanted to do this tutorial to show you step by step how to do it. So again, um, yeah, that. <laughs> So what I need to create now is a top because what I have for the top is just this simple slab of material. It's not really material yet. And I'm going to uh, hide all of this stuff. You can hide stuff, a lot of stuff by holding down shift and then clicking and then show and hide. So I'm going to hide all that. And I should probably hide this too, the case. So that's all I have for the top. Oh, turn off the section analysis. We don't need it. So that's all I have there. So I need to create a new piece. Again, I'm going to mill this out of wood. So my, I'm, I'm thinking my stock piece of wood will be a certain amount of thickness, and I'm going to cut all this stuff away and, and mill it all away. Or 
if you have a 3D printer, you can print this out. Obviously, you're going to print the case out, but you're going to print this out. This will be flat on your bed. You don't want to print on this side because you're going to need all the support material and stuff. So that's why um, it's going to be a two-piece cover thing, and then you can just glue this onto there which uh, I don't like to use glue too much, but for this, I can't. I don't know of a better way to do it, especially since it's gonna be milled out of a flat piece of wood. So I need to make a new piece of, of stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and hide this case piece, bring back, uh, not bring back the case, but bring back the lip thing, and this is gonna allow me to create a new cover, but, um, a new cover <laughs> that's it so I'm gonna click on extrude or just type E on my keyboard brings me up the extrude command and click on all these on all these things so now I'm going to extrude upwards how thick of the enclosure is up to you I think I'm gonna go with one millimeter because it doesn't need to be thick that thick, just about one millimeter is fine. Remember the whole case is about 1.5 millimeters thick, which is about three parameters of wall thickness when you actually 3D print it using a you know, 0.4 nozzle with 0.48 extrusion width and a 100% extrusion multiplier. We'll take a look at that in a little bit, hopefully in a little bit. So I've created that. Now if I bring back the case, you might see that it's not really in the right spot yet, so I'm actually going to bring this up. I'm going to change the operation to new body because it needs to be a new body, not a cut. And I'm going to change this to two sided. And I'm going to bring this back up. So you can see now, I actually want it to be over here, and then this one down by that much. Maybe, maybe that's too thin. I could always change the thickness later. So I will hit OK. That's going to create a new body. Let's name the body to uh, top cover. And I'm going to name top to uh, top NPR so that I know that it has the NPR logo branding on it. And now I need to create geometry that will snap fit into this guy. So to do that, I am going to hide the case, so I only have the, I still have the, the lip, um, the lip thing. <laughs> and what I'll do is I'm going to extrude it, click on extents, go to two, and then say I want it to go to two, this spot right here. And it's making an outer lip to it, so I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to hide my components too, maybe that'll help with some resources because my computer's chugging along. Show and hide. Still probably have more. Nope, that's all of them. All right, come on, come on. How's the audio? Is the audio okay? Yep. Okay. Now I'm gonna click on that just so I can see it. So I've basically created a little cover with a, a sort of a wall edge thing. So if I bring back my case. And then I do a section analysis. We can cut through and see what's going on here. You can see that now I have the case. And what I want to do is actually add a nub so that it can fill this space here and clamp onto the lip of the case. So to do that, uh, I'm actually going to create a new nubbing tool and call it nub tool instead of nub cutter because we've already created a nub cutter, we created a cookie cutter and now I'm going to hide the case, hide the section analysis and I'm going to start uh, drawing on the inner surface of the lip of the cover, the top cover. So I'll click on my, triangle, or my rectangle tool, click on whichever piece on the inside, it doesn't matter which surface because we're going to sweep it like we did on the other ones. And what is going on here? I don't know. But we're good. Okay, so I'm going to draw over here. Again, it doesn't matter how wide it is, it only matters that the thickness is good. So I'm going to just click on that. Hit stop sketch. Click on that little piece. Hit E on my keyboard. I'm going to extrude it by one millimeter. Change the operation to new body. Click OK bring up my chamfers and chamfer out these guys so I can make a triangle. Bam, there's a triangle, hit okay. 
Again, we're going to hit P on our keyboard, or actually click on the triangle side profile. Click P. It'll create a projection of the geometry. Hit OK. There she is. Get out of the sketch mode. Click on that guy. Hide the tool. I don't even need to name it. Cl right click. Go to where, where the heck is it? I don't see it. That's fine. I'm going to go create. Oops, not that button. Create sweep select my profile click on path select on the inner insides and now it sweeps across that whole thing so if I hit OK I've created a nubbin that's going on the inside of the of the case and now I can actually snap this into the case when I print it out so I'm going to click on the um, the, the, the section thing you can see here I have a nice clearance for the snap fit nubbin thing I've tested this out already like again like I said on the pie girl projects and that works out pretty well so that's how you make a uh, a really nice snap fit friction fit cookie cutter thing <laughs> I don't know what to call it so that's that's how to do it um, I'm going to turn off section analysis. So again, this is going to be printed flat over here. They're all chamfers, so overhangs are going to be no problem. Um, what else? Again, the NPR thing. Probably need to move it up a bit. I'm just going to select it, click M, and then move it up so that it's in the right spot here. Let's bring it up like this. Right there. It's right there, right there. Hit OK. That's going to be wood. I think, or 3D printed and another wood composite. And that's pretty much it. It's going to be like a three piece type enclosure deal. So, um, yeah, I think I'm, I'm happy with it. Obviously, the buttons are hidden. What I'll do now is actually remove these guys. So instead of deleting them, uh, I'll hit the remove thing here. So I can click uh, remove right there, right click on them, hit remove. Now, say this feature is referenced by other features in the timeline. Are you sure you want to delete? Well, that's why I hit remove. What happened? Usually, um, it doesn't matter. There you go. I don't know what happened there, but if you try to delete, obviously it's going to be like, hey, it's flipping out. So you can see in the timeline here, it actually is a, is a feature that is modifiable. So if you ever need those tools again, you can just delete these and or go back in time and and grab them out, pull them out, but I'm pretty much done with it, so I think that's it. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and save, added, cover, and cookie, cutter, lip, offset, DLE, whatever. Hit OK. I'm in a good spot to test this out. I recommend though, if you're doing big enclosures with a bunch of standoffs, and wanna do testers, I call them testers, and I'll show you what they are now. I have an overhead here with two testers that I've already 3D printed. Now my screen's looking a little dark. Give me a minute. Get brighter. That's probably the wrong camera. There we go. A little bit brighter. So check this out. Holes on what this is is it's incredibly thin. It's about 0.5 millimeters. It's a half of a millimeter, and it took literally like five minutes to print. It's got the little standoffs and things. So this is basically a quick test to see are my measurements correct? Are my tolerances correct? Will my component actually fit in the enclosure? Instead of printing the entire enclosure, you can just print a little test. And it fits perfectly. It snap fits perfectly. So I have this little little thing. And I don't have a schematic drawing of this, the this speaker. I actually got this from the Adafruit website. It in the in the product description has technical details and it told me the dimensions of the holes and the dimensions of the entire product. Um, so that's how I figured that out. I did not measure a thing. <laughs> well, okay, maybe I measured a couple of things, but as far as the holes, the distance between these these holes were all provided for me in the Adafruit uh, product page. So that's just, you can hear that too, it snap fits. Now the little nubbins are a little short, but um, they're longer in the actual enclosure. So that's one piece, that worked out right. And then the next piece is uh, this one here. 
This is another tester piece. Again, half of a millimeter thick. There's nothing here. I cut all this out because I don't need to print that. I'm just testing out mounting holes. And that's very, very essential to test if you want to properly mount things. Of course, you could just glue it, but you can have an exact fit. This one fits actually really nice. So that's it. That's how it's mount. That's how this uh, half size Proma Proto board is mounted. So that's how two little tester pieces it took about five minutes a piece to print. And I could even show you guys, I guess, how to make one if you guys want. Does anybody want me to show you that or should I close the the thing? I like the names he's giving. Yeah, <laughs> just like <laughs> uh, I woke up early today and I had to had to do some things. So that's why I'm a little bit loopy. I had a lot of coffee. Um, oh, cool. Hey, Angus from Maker Muse. Guys, check out Maker's Muse. Angus always does great content. I actually watched a, a video uh, earlier in the stream. It was a review of a cool 3D printing uh, tool. Cool tool. All right, well, I think I'm gonna cut there. Basically, I'll show you real quick how I made these testers. Since I model each component, here's the speaker, for example. I just sort of use the same techniques that I showed you, projecting a sketch. So I projected a sketch of these holes and then I created this little uh, this little mounting piece. So you can see, um, you can see it there. Pretty simple piece. I also did it for the Promo Proto. There's the little standoff piece. I just use the same, or you know, project it to make a new sketch, but that's it. I, did, I, I could do the same thing with the Raspberry Pi, but I've already tested the Raspberry Pi so many times so I know it works, but I haven't, I haven't made, uh, oh, I'm not showing you the screen. Derp, derp, let's go back to the screen. So I was just showing you guys, or just trying to show you guys, uh, the little tester in CAD. Uh, so you've seen me project sketches and stuff to create the lip. Well, I just project sketches from this component that I designed, you know, uh, from derived from sketches, and it just made a new body when I projected the sketch that had standoffs. There's offsets for the little nubs, and that's that's how you make it. I made the same thing for the Perma Proto, and I haven't. I haven't needed to do the Raspberry Pi Zero because I, I, I've I've already tested it quite a bit and I just keep reusing my components. So now if I ever need to use the speaker or, or a half size Promo Proto, I don't have to remake the components. I have them. And if you guys ever want them, uh, I can make them as a public download so you can download it as a Fusion Archive and you can save it out as a STEP file, an IGS file, a SAT file. And now a Google SketchUp file, which they added, which is pretty pretty cool. Um, yeah, at some point I would really like to have a GitHub repo where every single component that I've made is available for you guys to download. I'm still working on that. Not sure how to properly do it because there is quite a bit of components. So I just sort of give them out in a need to know basis, if that makes sense. Like I just give them out if people ask for it. So if you want any of these components, let me know. I will give you the download link so you can have your way at it. All open source goodness, right? So that's about it, guys. I need to have lunch soon. It is 12 p.m. over here in the Eastern time and uh, the East Coast. I think that's it. I'm going to actually print this out too. I don't know if it fits on my printer bot. I guess it, sh it might. It may not. I don't even know how big this is. I, <laughs> I don't even know how big this is. Uh, cause, cause again, I didn't add any dimensions to the case. They're just kind of, it's just kind of fits all the components. Just kind of group the components as much as I could and, you know, whoop, whoop, and right there. Okay. So I'm going to print this out. Let's go ahead and, and bring it into Simplify 3D, my favorite slicer of choice. I'm just going to save it as an STL. Refinement, they should name that to quality, but whatever. I'm gonna hit OK and save it here. I'm gonna call it uh, NPR O for one case. Let's go to simplify. This is the last thing I printed on the printer bot play. And I'll hit exit, I'll remove it, import the new STL. It's right there. It is too large. No, see how, wow, that's pretty big. And if I right click on it, tell me how big it is. 140 millimeters by 95 millimeters. The printer bot is 
is I believe 100 by 100 by 100. Let me look at my profile. I don't even know. Mm. Yeah, it is 100 cubed. 100 cubed. Wait, the Z axis go to 130 millimeter. That's kind of cool. Uh, but this is ideally how I would print it. Let me uh, set up a profile for the uh, Flash Forge. When uh, my parts are too big, I use the Flash Forge. And that is a pretty big case. But I mean, it's got a lot of stuff in it, so. Hmm. Whatever. Let me show you something that uh, I don't know. Let me let me click on prepare to print and just show you why I like to use a 1.5 millimeter thickness for the case. Take a look at that. Um, the parameter the parameters. It's actually set to two, but there's three. So there's like an outer, an inner, and then a third middle one, and that's pretty neat. That's why I like using 1.5 millimeters. And of course, that only applies if your nozzle is 0.4, if your extrusion multiplier is 0 0.1 uh, or, or 100, and if your extrusion width, mine's at the uh, auto, but it's, uh, it's apparently 0 0.48. So if you do some maths, it'll be three parameters. What else do I have here in, in the layer? Uh, primary layer height, 1.9. It's a little bit smaller than 0.2. Four tops, four bottoms, two shells. That's it. I think that's all that's interesting. So I'm gonna go ahead and print this out. I wish I had a camera on my flash forge so I can maybe live stream that, but I think that's it. Uh, you might notice that there's some overhangs for the portholes, which is for the uh, USB charging, the HDMI, mini HDMI, and the USB for peripherals stuff. You might notice that uh, is a little overhang, but I found that when your bridge is small, and it is a bridge because it's connecting, it's actually not bad at all. And that's that's about it. Just a bunch of standoffs and a box with holes in it. <laughs> and the actual uh, the lip here is actually just two parameters wide. The uh, the crazy looking cookie cutter lip thing. I could make it thicker, but I found it to be okay. I haven't broken a lip yet. Because um, I would think too that it would that the lip would break because it's only two parameters thick, but it's pretty good. So at least with my experience and, and the printers that I use, works out pretty well. All right, that's it. Maybe I'll check some chat stuff. Take a look at the chat. Appreciate you guys hanging out in the chat, talking amongst yourselves. <laughs> Again with the hair. Yeah, I need to get a haircut. Sorry about the hair. Nothing ever fits for me at 100% multiplier. It needs to be 93. Curvy, yeah. Uh, maybe because their nozzle is a little bit thicker. It's it, You're using a Lulzbot, right? So it's not 0.4 millimeters, and you're using uh, 2.85 thickness material filament. So that might have something to do with it. Um, so you, again, your mileage or, or, or tolerances may vary, of course, from printer to printer, things sometimes change but uh, from my experience all the printers I have just about have a 0 0.4 millimeter nozzle and they all take 175 material so that's why my fusion my, that's why I can use uh, um, just about the same settings for all of my printers which is actually a really good thing so I know if I print these little testers out on any nozzle he says I switch around from 0 0.25 to 6 um, and you use Simplify. I know you use Simplify. I wonder why that is. That is a conundrum. I'm not sure, but but at least when I print when I print these testers on a Flash Forge, they are dead the same. They're they're the same. Different style of printer. Well, I mean they're both Cartesian. They both they both are Cartesian. So, and they have different firmware. One's Sailfish, and this one's Merlin. So I don't know. That is a good question. Hmm. All right. Well, that in, that's insightful. And that's another reason why uh, in, in the tutorials that we do, the written tutorials, we tend to say um, these are suggested print settings. We do give the settings for the things that we use, but yeah, it prints good either way, though. That's good to hear. As a maker, you figure out what setting works for your printer. 
And if you want to make changes and stuff, we always give away the, the source files so you guys can have your way at it. All right, folks, that is going to be it. I am reaching, what, 40 minutes? I really wanted this to be like oh, half of that. I wanted this to be like 20 minutes, but anyway. You guys, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. I'm going to print this out and have some lunch. And when I get back, maybe I can continue the stream and show it mounting stuff. I don't know. We'll see. All right, guys. I will see you in the next one. Until then, remember to keep on a and making and good stuff. Bye, everybody.